What's the word, y'all? NBA play-in day one is wrapped up. The first two games were incredible. Obviously, game number two is better than game number one, but I still saw some great things in game number one that we're going to talk about. But I got to start off with this Minnesota Timberwolves LA Clippers game because, boy, it was truly amazing. It is exactly what the fans need when it comes to play-ins. I don't know what the Raiders are going to look like because we didn't have a LeBron or a Steph Curry like a few years ago. But if you are in tune to this game, you walked out excited, unless you're a Clippers fan. Yeah, unless you're a Clippers fan, then you're probably not too excited about the thing. We're going to talk about it. First, I want to promote my newsletter again. But this is for a specific reason. The newsletter is something we drop Monday, Wednesday, Friday, talking about all things basketball. It's for the basketball fan, by the basketball fan. But the reason I'm bringing this up right now with the playoffs getting started, we put together a little playoff bracket a challenge, tournament, if you will, for the people that are subscribed to the Enjoy Basketball newsletter. We're talking really good prizes for people that have the best potential bracket. So if you think you can predict every single series the right amount and get the NBA champion, go ahead and hit that link in the description the only people that can enter this tourney is the people that are subscribed to the enjoy basketball newsletter do not miss out and if you're already subscribed no big deal just open up the newsletter in the next day and you're going to get all the information that you need okay cool cool let's talk about this game if i were to ask you yesterday morning what do you think the outcome of the game for the minnesota timberwolves would be if i told you carthony towns is going to shoot three for 11 he's only going to play 24 minutes he's going to foul out and end with 11 points I would assume that 97% of the people are like, oh, the Minnesota Timberwolves must have lost that game. Well, absolutely not because everything else fell into place. And I would go out on a limb and say the best thing that happened to Minnesota today was Carl Anthony Towns fouling out. Because when he was on the court, the Clippers were going at him. They were going on runs. And then when he got, when he got booted, first of all, disgusting performance from Carl Anthony Towns. I'm happy for them and for the city. But whoa. Um, he's so lucky that he has the teammates that he has to to pick him up because for a guy that's in all NBA conversations an all star caliber dude, the star player of this team, there's no way you should put together this performance. And, and like the, I hate when NBA players foul, and you would have swear to God that they did it. Cat, we got the replays. Everybody at home sees it. Like, I saw many fans like, oh, it's us versus the refs. It wasn't, bro. I would say five out of the six cat fouls or guaranteed fouls. There might have been one questionable. But the one that he fouled out on, inexcusable. For you to be in that situation, knowing that you have five fouls to go over the back on the ball that you couldn't even... It don't matter. Y'all won the game, so it don't matter. Everything else fell into place. And what I love is that uh, Anthony Edwards on national TV where everybody was watching was like, I'm I'm that dude. And you know what? This is what makes me <laughs> this is what makes me even matter. ESPN put together an article. 25 players under 25. I swear to God, they put together this article like once a week, it feels like, but they put together another one. And in the overall list, I think Anthony Edwards ended up being like 11 or 12. I just got rid of that green screen stuff beneath me. 11 or 12, but there was one writer at ESPN, and I don't remember who it was. They had Anthony Edwards as the 24th best player under 25 25 under 25 he had he had Anthony Edwards 24 and I'm just like have you watched a single performance from from this dude he is electric and when you need him to do the things he can do the things hitting his threes going at the rack when Carnegie Town is out and they're only up by one and they need a desperate bucket going to the rack drawing the fouls he did everything you needed him to and was a plus on the defensive side of the ball MVP goes to Anthony Edwards. But I can actually give MVP to like three different other people. Let's talk about those other people. Number two, D'Angelo Russell. When the game was starting, D'Angelo Russell um, was was very passive. And I, it's understandable. He's D'Angelo Russell. He's a playmaker. I wouldn't say he's a playmaker first, but he's a guy that likes to facilitate. And the Carson Towns gets a foul trouble. He's like, okay, I got ice in my veins. Let me do this thing. He had like three shots down the stretch where he showed the ice in his veins, and they were big time shots. And I love what he said in his post game interview saying like, hey, the playing is a thing, but we thought we were too good to be in a plan in any way. So this is not anything crazy for us. Us, and then when you pan around, it's really something crazy. Um, Carnegie Towns is hugging his girlfriend, which is great, and having a great moment. Uh, Patrick Beverly is literally crying. He jumps on the stanchion and is going to the crowd. So it might not have been something big for uh, for D'Angelo Russell, a guy that's been in the playoffs previously. But for the other team and for the city, it was it was <laughs> it was pretty big. It was funny on inside the NBA. Uh, they were laughing slash making fun of the fact that they're acting like this is the NBA Finals. They were like, this is the fastest playoff we've ever seen because the Finals haven't won by the Minnesota Timberwolves. But I'm not mad at them for being excited about making the playoffs since this has been an organization that has only made it, what, three, two times since Kevin Garnett left? You know what I'm saying? Making it is a big deal for this organization. So, Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell, Patrick Beverly. Now, 
I'm on record for the entirety of my channels saying that I am a Patrick Beverly fan. And if you're not, I completely understand some of the things that bro do is unethical. Like the push on Chris Paul at the end of the last playoffs, unethical. There's, as a fan, I can't even, can't even excuse that. But if we're talking strictly some of the shenanigans on the court, I love it. The fact that he almost got Markeith Morris um, kicked out of a game that is like a must a must win game. I know they if they would have lost, they would have had another matchup. But like a must win game is a, is is amazing to me. The fact that he got the last couple stops and picked Reggie Jackson's pocket at the end of the game is amazing to me. Patrick Beverly deserves some love as well. And then the last person, of course, everybody played their role. Malik Beasley hit some shots. Um, Jared Vanderbilt was an engine, and they were on the glass completely as a team, and that's one of the reasons why they won this game. Um, another guy that deserves a ton of love is Nas Reed because he came in and did his thing. Like I said, the best thing to happen to this team today is the Minnesota Timberwolves, when they came to winning this game, was having Carl Anthony Towns foul out. Because when, when Bro was on the court, they were going at him. And they were struggling. Because, I mean, I, I got to give Tyron Lue some props in this aspect. He had a good game plan for Carl Anthony Towns. He, a great game plan for Carl Anthony Towns. But when Cat was on the bench... It was open world for a lot of other people. And, and Najri coming in and hitting some big shots, getting a couple really big offensive rebounds. He deserves some love as well. I'm excited that Minnesota is going to make the playoffs. They're going against Memphis in the first round, and that is a that might be my favorite series out of all of them. Leg ah! You know what? That that's Celtics Nets that series is going to be insane too. But these are going to be great, great series. So I'm excited for Minnesota. Um, congratulations. Now you got a seven-game series to prepare for. But the Clippers. Not a game you want to lose. Um, up by 10 points, Carnegie Towns fouls out, and you lose. Uh, it was, for me, as a spectator, it was way too much Reggie Jackson down the stretch. And actually, I have the statistics here. Hold on. In the fourth quarter, Reggie Jackson was one for six with three turnovers, and one of them being on the biggest possession of the entire game. For Paul George to have such an electric and great third quarter, and, and them to go away from him in the fourth is ridiculous. It's like Reggie Jackson completely forgot that Paul George was back on the court. Norman Powell only, he ended up with 16 points, and I don't know how many scored in the fourth quarter, but he deserves to get the ball in his hands a lot more. Somebody had to pull Reggie Jackson to the side and say, bro, it's okay, bro. It's okay to hit the A button. You know what I'm saying? It's okay to hit X. Pass the damn ball. He had a he had a play where he's shooting a leaning three in the corner. That's one. He had a play where he gets to the rim and missed the open layup. That's two. And the last play of the game, he turns it over. The last big possession of the game, he turns it over. A, a bad performance by him. And for a guy that has been really, really good for them for the entire season, and a must win. Again, I'm keep putting must win in quotation marks. And a must win performance, he, he, he sold. <laughs> he sold. There's no other way to put it. Oh, also, in my notes, it says that this team needs to get a damn rebound. So, that was the thing. I don't know how many second-chance points um, the Minnesota Timberwolves actually had in the grand scheme of things. But, again, I remember a couple really big rebounds from Nas Reed. Uh, V8 was on the glass. They needed to get rebounds, and they absolutely did not get rebounds. I, I want to show a lot of love to the Timberwolves, bro. They showed a ton of heart today. And the Clippers, man, y'all got to do y'all thing. I know this is not a year where you're necessarily competing because Kawhi Leonard has not been healthy and all of it, but you still want to get good habits, man. Amir Coffey played a total of six seconds. I do not like that. Um, uh, Isaiah Hardenstein, I would love to see more of him. He had the one backdoor cut pass that he threw that was uh, amazing, and I would have loved to see more of him. And now I'm thinking about it. Where the f where the hell was Luke Kennard? Out for the play-in against the Timberwolves. Okay, there it is. It's like, yeah, where was Luke Kennard? He played a couple nights ago, so I was confused why he wasn't out there. But I thought maybe he got a DMP coach decision. Now, that would have been wild if Luke Kennard didn't play at all. But it was for a reason. He just wasn't there. Um, I saw that Jason Preston was wearing a clip ganger don't bang hoodie. That was dope. And I saw that Torian Prince wasn't playing. And I, he's been a guy that's been really good for the Minnesota Timberwolves for the past month or two. Um, so him not playing, I thought that was going to hurt them. They brought in Josh Okogie for like nine seconds. He got into some foul trouble. And he was like, you know what? <laughs> Fitz was like, you know what? We okay. Rick completely okay. But shout out to the Timberwolves, man. Let's move over to the next game. This is the bad thing about me doing these recaps. Is like if you have a game earlier in the day, I'm going to forget some things. And even though I got some notes here, I feel like if I recorded this video first and then came back to record part two, it would have been better. Either way, the Brooklyn Nets um, win a game. And I want to give a lot of love to the Cavaliers for putting up a fight because in the first quarter, it was 20-8. to eight And Kyrie Irving did not miss a shot until what seemed like the fourth quarter. And he's doing it during Ramadan, which is which is crazy when you really think about it. He's fasting. He can't eat. He can't drink until sundown. And I remember people asking, like, is this going to be a thing for Kyrie? Is he going to struggle in these play-in slash playoff games because he's he's fasting? And then I I really remember last year he was fasting and bro put up like a 40-something piece. So I was like, nah, 
Kyrie is just a different beast, you know. He's so efficient. He's so electric. He's so fun to watch. I made a tweet during this game that was like, if I needed to win one game, if I needed to just win one game and I had all of the players in the NBA to pick from, it's hard for me not to, to pick KD. It's between KD and Giannis, obviously. But it was so hard for me to not pick KD because early in this game, um, the Cavs start throwing double bodies at Kevin Durant. He was like, no problem. I'll pick you apart. And he ended up with 11 assists. He did eventually get to the point where he was scoring the ball once they needed it the most, but he was he was playmaking. He had some crazy blocks, the one on Laurie Market, and he had a chase down block. He ended up with three big blocks, two big steals, and he was amazing this game. But my MVP ball, even though <laughs> Carrie Irvin had 34 points on 80% shooting, he don't get the MVP ball. You know who does? Goddamn Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown on the short roll was looking like, I don't know, he was looking amazing on the short roll, bro. For the dude to be 6'3", 6'4", playing the full position and doing it well, he was getting up there for boards. He ended with nine on the night. Um, Gordon Dragic had a couple rebounds too. Oh, no, it was Patty, Patty uh, Mills. They were talking about him. He's the smallest guy on the court. He had him five rebounds. Bruce Brown deserves all of the love because I, I would consider myself, and I'll say this publicly, you know, I might be wrong here. I consider myself a Brooklyn Nets skeptic in a sense that I know that they're a good team, but do I trust the others, and do I trust their defense enough to win, what is that, one, two, three, four, seven game series to be ch uh, champions? I'm still skeptical. You know what I'm saying? They did go against a Brooklyn, I mean, a, a Cavs team that is beat up. But it did ease my pain a little bit to see Bruce Brown continuing the stuff that he's been doing for the last two months. To see um, Nicholas Claxton play a huge role today and be successful. It did ease my pain a little bit, but I would still classify myself as a skeptic. The, the series versus the Celtics, as of right now, I have no idea who I'd be picking and how many. But still, what a great game from the Brooklyn Nets doing what they had to do um, and, and winning this game. I got a lot of love for the Cavaliers for keeping it close and making it interesting down the stretch. I'm happy that Darius Garland got to show some people on national TV that, hey, I'm really that dude. And even Evan Mobley had his moments in this game that you can see why people have him as their rookie of the year and why they talk about him being somewhat of a generational defender, man. What a great day for basketball. Next, tomorrow, the 9-10 matchups. The 9-10 matchups are going to be good as well, bro. So let me know what you think about these games. Uh, be sure to hit that link in the description, subscribe to the newsletter, and I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.